Welcome to Canada's podcast. So hi everyone, today I'm with Laura, founder and CEO of Maison Test, an online Canadian luxury home linen brand. So Laura, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. So as we always do on Canada's podcast, we like to learn about entrepreneurs' life, how they got to start their own business, what is their vision for their life as an entrepreneur. So you tell us how you became an entrepreneur and like, what's your story? So I don't think that you become an entrepreneur. I think that you are an entrepreneur. It's something that um, you need to have the DNA makeup to be able to do that every day. Um, you need to have a specific um, personality type, very clear vision, and you cannot get caught up on details. You have to stay very macro because there's a lot of details that come in the day to day that could deroute you from your main mission, but you have to stay very steady and very clear onto what your goal is. Um, as for Maison Tess, our main goal is to become the, le the leaders in bedding and anything homeware throughout Canada. And we launched, uh, well, I launched Maison Tess in 2017. So my story came about very naturally. I was um, a young mom. I'm still a young mom, but I was a young mom in 2017. Two kids in uh, two years. And so during that time, I was home a lot. And um, I'm an avid consumer on a personal note. And I have no shame in saying that. I buy a lot of things online. And whenever I find a brand that I like, um, I have no problem trying it out and testing out new products. Um, during that time, so I was home and I was trying to redecorate. I'm just adding accents. I didn't really want to redo a kitchen or change my couch. I just wanted to add freshness and new colors into my home. And I couldn't find a website. I couldn't find a brand that was Canadian based that would let me do that. And so I pushed my research a bit more and then I decided to go um, like physically in brick and mortars and see um, what was happening. And it was really flat. Like it was these huge department stores with no windows. It was really not sexy. And sometimes you need to have like, you need to have a sexy brand come forward and say, hey, this is fun. This is what you need. These are the colors. This is the style. And there was really nothing. So I went into this, this big department store and I'm like, if I was really looking for a pop of color, I would probably leave here with a set of white bedding because I'm just so overwhelmed by all the fabrics, all the colors, all the sizes. Like, I just want to get out of here. There's, there's really nothing that making me want to stay so um after thinking about it I told myself that if I a 30 something at the time couldn't find what I was looking for then there was definitely a gap in the market I'm someone who loves retail who was always really into fashion and I thought that the home is should become a place that reflects your personality same way that um, sometimes when you walk down the street and the way that you dress or the way that you speak or the way that you do your hair really defines in a very quick snapshot who you are i felt like the home should be that way you should be able to go into someone's house and really understand what their personality is like and um, from that desire i created maison Tess, which really is the combination of fashion and the home. And the way that I built it is having a premium slash luxury price point and quality, but I mix it in with seasonal pitches of color. So year round, we're going to have very um, basic colors, whites, grays, pinks, really something like a palette that you can use year round. And then every time a season comes in, there is new colors that are I don't want to say limited edition, but the quantities are smaller, so they sell out really quickly. And they're here to add a pop of color to any bedroom, living room, kitchen, tableware, et cetera, et cetera, that um, you would want. Because I figure that in July, you don't really want to see the same colors that you do in January. So we kind of, we play on that. And um, from that idea, I, I really made it very, very macro right now. But from that main idea, I created Maison Tess and... Um, I decided from the get-go to make it online pre-COVID. Um, I really didn't want to have any wholesale. I didn't want to have any stores. Um, I told myself that brands today um, should be as transparent as possible because that's what I, I was looking for as a consumer. And um, there was no need to have a middleman involved. And so I kept it that way. And at the beginning, it was really hard because like any business, we needed revenue in our business in our um, in, in our cash flow, basically. 
And um, so I still refuse the wholesale opportunities because I really believed in that business model. And uh, fast forward uh, three and a half years later, COVID hit and in a sad way, it kind of confirmed um, that this is the business model of the future. So I'm, I'm pretty happy that we, we stuck with it. And it seems like you're really putting your values inside your business. So why is that 100%. important to you? Well, because like anything in life, if you're honest, you can't fail. I'm not making this up. It's who I am. So it's very easy to streamline and to continue with this steady vision because I didn't make it up. It's part of me and I know exactly who I am. So I'm able to um, very easily guide my employees into this very clear vision of fashion, fun, sexy, authenticity, transparency, all of these things that are such key factors for me as a woman and as a consumer are very easy for me to extend onto my company because they're part of my DNA. And, and oftentimes, um, people will ask me certain questions, and like about our consumers. And um, my answer is that I am my consumer. I don't need to understand it. I am her. And I say her because most of our um, most of our consumers are female. There is a lot of males, but women remain dominant in, um, in the consumers that we have. And I am them. I know what they want to see. I know how they want to have a turnaround. I know when they get on our Instagram page, what is attractive, what customer service makes sense to them. So these are all what user experience like things like very basic UX experience that you go back to your cart and your things are still there. It's very annoying when it's not like you had this whole cart and you worked so hard on it and you go back and it's not there and you have to start from scratch. You're like, oh, forget it. I'm not doing it. So all of these things, like they're, they're, they're in my mind because I'm on both ends. I'm on the entrepreneur side, but I'm also on the consumer side. So it makes it, um, it makes it clear. And you're also on the mom side, as you said. So like if for all the moms out there listening <laughs> and running their business at the same time, yeah. like what, yeah. what are your tips and tricks or what, what makes it work for you? Honestly, that's, um, that's a question I get asked a lot. And my answer, my honest answer is that um, the guilt that is put over our heads to be moms and exclusively moms and feel bad if we're doing something else is, is man-made. And if you free yourself from that guilt, there's really nothing that stops you. I, I really don't understand how I could not be doing what I'm doing. I have two kids. I'm pregnant right now. And um, it's all good. Like, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> there's things that happen. Like this morning, I dropped off my kids, but there was no school. It's okay. I brought them back home. I came to work. <laughs> I came for the podcast. Everything is fine. Like, it's, It's just a question of um, managing, sorry, it's a question of managing uh, your day to day, being really, really organized, really having a good schedule and having a really supportive spouse. Honestly, I couldn't, um, I can't pretend that this is a one woman show. I have a husband who's super helpful, who also works full time, who's extremely supportive, uh, supportive of me, like I am of him. And I kind of feel like young couples today, like the roles are, are divided. I think around me, like if I just look around, a lot of daddies are way more involved. You see them more at drop off or at pick up at school. Like there is really a, a fair exchange of tasks. So it's really up to the mamas to be like, hey, I'm not doing this today. It's your turn to do that because I'm doing this. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I, I do agree that we see more of this division of tasks so that we can all have the life that we want. So yeah, course, really inspiring. And um, and you talked about your team. So we know when we when we start a business, one of the first thing is, yes, as you mentioned, cash flow, but also like yeah. the people that you surround yourself yeah. with. So like what do you what what is the, the secret the secret recipe that you found in hiring people with your values and will who will have this, who will share the same vision that you have? So the secret recipe is to hire no one for as long as possible and do everything yourself. That is the secret recipe. Um, from 2017 to half of 2020, I was running this alone with one employee who happens to be my sister. And so we were um, on a mission. There was no time zone. There was no, oh, it's five o'clock, time to go home. We did what we needed to do. And at that time, a lot of people would come to our showroom. So when the brand got a little bit more known, 
we'd have people from Montreal, like who realized that we were also from Montreal, come into the showroom and buy. At that time, we had our inventory in the office. And, um, and they would say, oh, this is your team. They thought that we were like a 20 people Nice. company but in reality we were like her and I customer service e-commerce um, uh, name it we were doing it except for things that we physically couldn't do like a uh, design or things that demanded specific knowledge we would have to outsource by the hour but we didn't have um, we didn't have a steady team and we did that for um, almost three years and then uh, we expanded our team so we went from a team of two to seven in six months and at that time it was really the the best asset that I had was that I did all the roles and my sister did all of the roles so we were able to really define like this is your mission and this is what you need to do this is what customers want this is the user experience that we need so building a team there is um, a sense of the task but there is also the sense of a company culture. When you come into a small team, um, to be really honest, sometimes it gets awkward because it's a small team. When it's a bigger team, you kind of melt in. So you have to develop a, a culture that represents the brand and you have to be a boss for myself, but also be empathetic. So it's really kind of finding a middle ground and, and making sure that your values um, as a person really are reflected in your company, but that when we come here to work at Maison Test, we're working. And when work is done, we can laugh, we can play, we can joke around, we're all girls. By default, it didn't happen. I think that that um, it's a brand that attracts females. So we're all girls. So. We have a really good time, but I'm, I'm pretty uh, tough. Like there's KPIs that need to be met every month and, and it's not a joke. So we work hard, but we have a good time doing it. And what's your vision for your life as a, as a mom, as an entrepreneur, uh, for, your, for your business? I mean, I don't have uh, this is what I want in 10 years, but all I can say is that I want it all. I want a great business. I want a happy marriage. I want healthy kids and I want to have a good time. <laughs> That's great. I think that's, that's what I don't we know. all want. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Nothing special. Just a really, really good time. <laughs> great. And is there anything, uh, anything that you want to share with, with our audience about, you know, about maybe advice that you got that really made a difference for you when you started and that you would like to share with them or things in your routine that are actually like essential for you for being productive? Anything like for that? For sure. Um, for me, a big part of um, my life before I was pregnant, because now it's just a bit more relaxed, um, I was at the gym every morning for a good hour, an hour and a half. And I split the days with my husband because he, he runs, um, he's a runner. So it's also very important for him. So there was two or three times a week that I would go drop off and then he would do the other way around. But that hour and a half, that 90 minutes that I spent at the gym is the only 90 minutes that I have for myself. And I take that super seriously. Um, I needed to break that sweat. I needed to take that shower alone and get to the office, like just like if I had 90 minutes for me. And that gave me um, the energy and the strength that I needed to conquer my days and also to be a good person because I really believe that to be um, a good entrepreneur, a good mom, a good whatever, you need to have time for you. I'm not the, um, I'm not the kind of person um, who will um, say like, I put everyone ahead of me. I'm more the person who's like, I'll put you ahead of me, but I need to make sure that I'm okay. Like if I don't sleep and I, if I don't feel good, if I didn't break that sweat, I'm just, I'm not a good person. So I know that I need that. And so then it gives me the rest of the day, the whole Uh, 10 hours and a half is all good, just as long as I get those 90 minutes. That was a big one for me. And another very good advice that I got is um, that entrepreneurs are always in a rush. We always think that we're missing something. Oh, I didn't do that color. Oh, I missed that season. Oh, I didn't, um, I didn't uh, put in this, um, this uh, third party, uh, like, like this experience in my website. But in reality, People don't see it. It's a stress that we put on ourselves because we're visionaries and we are always one step ahead. So I guess the main, um, the main advice would be no rush. Take your time. Take your time to think things through. Work hard every day um, and work hard with a vision. Don't work hard to, for, for, a, 
a short-term goal. Work hard for a long-term goal. Work with passion. That's that's a big one. Yeah, we we can we can hear the passion in in your yeah. voice and like the love that you have for your company. And and thanks so much for for taking the time to share this with us. I think it's really inspiring. We can see that you're a fierce leader for your family, for your company. So very, yeah. very inspiring. And anyone can go on your website, maisontest.com. But if there's a, if they have questions or is there a way that you'd like them to reach you if people have questions or want to Absolutely. learn more about you? So you can go on our website, maisontest.com. We have an English website and a French website for anyone who's interested. And um, the best way to reach out to us is either through our emails like hello at maisontest.com. Someone from customer service will reach out to you in 24 hours or on Instagram. And we are glad to help. Um, we also put in something really nice on our website that's doing well, which is called virtual styling. So we have someone from our team who is available on video conference and our customers show us their bedroom and we get to suggest to them uh, different colors and fabrics that they may like. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and people really like it also. So we're here to help. And, and, and uh, we promise a quality product with a VIP service. Wonderful. Well, that sounds very, very interesting. So thanks a lot for your time, Laura. And, Thank you so much. Um, and uh, take care. Thank you. Bye.